Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the February 2024 meeting of the Racial Disparities in the Criminal and Juvenile Justice System Advisory Panel. Um, let's just get going. Let's start with introductions. I'll go through the Hollywood Squares as usual. Erin, could you start us off, please? Good evening. Hey, Tom, I'm sorry, I'm just going to interrupt real quick. I have to go back and do it. I had the jury has a question. So I'm, gonna, I'm leaving and coming back. Got it. Thanks. Take sorry. Care. Absolutely. It happens. And um, Judge Morrissey's leaving, coming and going doesn't affect our quorum. So we're right. good there. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Erin Jacobson. I am the Attorney General's designee. I work in our office's Community Justice Unit. Great. Thank you. Chief Don. I'm Don Stevens, Chief of the Nolhegan uh, Band of the Kusak Abenaki Nation. Great. Thank you. Judge Morrissey will do when she can. Um, Grant. Hi, Grant Taylor here taking minutes for the group. Good Great. to see everybody again. Rebecca. Hi, everyone. Uh, I have a call this evening, so excuse my weird voice. But uh, Rebecca Turner from the Office of the Defender General. Great. <clears throat> Tyler. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tyler Allen. I am the commissioner uh, appointed designee for DCF. Great. Thank you. Laura. Sorry about my hair. Um, my name is Laura Carter. I am a data analyst in the Division of Racial Justice Statistics for the Office of Racial Equity. Great, thank you. Jessica. Jessica Brown, she, her assistant professor and director of the Center for Justice Reform at Vermont Law and Graduate School. Great. Daniel. Dan Bennett, Vermont State Police, Deputy Director of the Fair and Impartial Policing. Great. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Morris, um, Family Services Division, but not the DCF designee. Great, thank you. Sheila. Sheila Linton, she, her pronouns, I'm Executive Director of the Root Social Justice Center and panel member. Barzana. Hi, good afternoon, evening. The, uh, Farzana Leva, Orleans County State's Attorney. Great. Uh, Zoe Hart. Uh, Zoe Hart, just concerned citizen sitting in. Okay, thank you. Tiffany. Oh, hi, good evening. Um, Tiffany North Reed um, with the Division for Racial Justice Statistics with the Office of Racial Equity. Okay. Um, I'm assuming Isaac's Otter Pilot will not ret return a an invite. <laughs> Although I may be wrong, Isaac's Otter Pilot. No, that's a transcription service. I thought so. Thank you. Susanna. Hi, everybody. Susanna Davis, Racial Equity Director for the state. Great. Chris, Loris. Chris, you're muted. Chris. Sorry about that. Christopher Loris, uh, research associate. Where'd you go? I'm here. Okay, am I back at you? Yep. Okay, Christopher Loris, sorry about that, folks. Research associate with Crime Research Group. And uh, just here observing, full disclosure, until the end of this month, I'm still a member of the Vermont Criminal Justice Council. Jack Rose. Hi there. Uh, yeah, thanks. I am Jack Rose. She, her pronouns. I am at Department of Corrections. I'm the Health Equity Director, but I am not the designee. I expect that Derek Nadovnik will be um, arriving. He might be late, but um, he's our DOC designee. Great. Reverend Mark Hughes. Executive Director of Vermont Racial Justice Alliance. I'm just watching tonight. Welcome. And I will not be able to pronounce VPA, VPA. 
Lindsay Turge, Director of Administration, Vermont Criminal Justice Council. Okay, great. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> okay, welcome all. A uh, few announcements, um, fairly short. Um, and I don't suppose I really need to say much about it. Um, there's no relitigating anything. None. Okay, the report's done. We've been have we've been doing this for over a year. It's done. Little things are fine. Um, I know that there is a request from um uh oh gosh, I'm blanking now. I've got so much in my head I can't hold it on. Uh the attorney general to move their statement to another place in the report. Um, things of that nature are fine. Um, but there's no major opening this up again. And yeah, it's if you don't like it, your group doesn't like it, your commissioner doesn't like it, it's no. Just vote no. Okay. Um it, it, it there's just no time for anything more than that at this point. Um that is the large uh point that I want to make. The smaller one is, Elizabeth, you're going to handle actually the voting and writing things down, correct? So there's been a little bit of a change with that. Can you talk about what you're going to do? Yeah, so my plan um, is that really fun spreadsheet. Uh, what I've done is I have added everybody's name, and I'm, I'm happy to share my screen um, while I do this, although it might People might prefer to see each other's faces. And as we do roll call, uh, which I believe we have to because nothing is going to be unanimous, I will indicate yes, no, or abstain for every vote um, for every person as we go through in that spreadsheet so that we don't have to. I know you had suggested taking photos at the end, um, but this um, is just an alternative if, it, if it's appropriate. Well, it's also a lot less crazy than everybody having to take photos. And I, I mean, I don't know, you know, I'll come up with something incredibly obscene. And and I did. Um, so there's that. Oh, Derek, want to introduce yourself? Hi, good evening. Sorry, I'm in a dark car. Derek Mia Dupnik, uh designee to the Department of Corrections. Great. And Tim. Uh, Tim Reeders, Tim what? Department of State's Attorneys and Sheriffs. Great. Okay. Um, that is really the big stuff. The other stuff that I need to ask about, um, I'll do a new business because um, it really falls under that, I think. Um, let's see. I also had forgotten because when I wrote the agenda, I hadn't yet... Um, gotten the minutes and so they were out of sight out of mind we have the minutes from our last meeting um and we need to approve or change or throw out <laughs> the minutes from our meeting in january um does anyone have discussion on those Okay, seeing none, uh, does someone want to make a motion? I move to approve the minutes from our January 9th, 2024 meeting. Thank you. A second. Oh, second. Thank you, Sheila. Second. All in favor signify in some really dramatic way. Aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. Oh, okay. Sorry. All opposed. Okay, all abstaining. The minutes are approved as submitted. Thank you. Um, and we will pardon. Oh, thought I heard something. Those will get to Ann Walker for posting. All right. Um, now let's start on um the report. Let us begin with that. Elizabeth, I think I'm going to work with you sort of, I'm sorry. So I keep hearing background stuff, folks. Can we try to keep that to a minimum? 
Thanks. Thanks. Um, Elizabeth, um, let's work together on this one because, yeah, I think that'll work best. We're going to vote on the, you all have the spreadsheet, so you know what you're doing. Um, we're going to go through it. It goes through the report. Um, and I think, Elizabeth, go ahead and start us. What is, the first item on the on the spreadsheet is i believe we're starting the second look we are and the first question is second look legislation should remain focused on addressing and correcting racial disparities we need to vote on that and we're going to go one by one it's a little slow but it is necessary for transparency um and accountability so I will go again. I'll do. I'll continue playing um, Hollywood Squares, and please give your vote out loud when we get to you. We'll start again with Aaron. Okay, I just need to preface my votes on second look by saying the Attorney General's Office does not support second look legislation at this time. However, if there is any second look legislation, then we would vote yes um that any second look legislation should remain focused on addressing and correcting racial disparities so can we make a a spot um elizabeth for those kinds of splits just write them out or something yeah i i will say and i um i know at the, our last meeting we talked about taking an overarching vote on whether or not you're supportive of second look legislation i know that there was not necessarily general consensus on whether or not we should or should not do that i would say that that would make this process a lot easier oh i know i know so, but i'll put that out there um but it's it's not what's gonna happen i think Unfortunately, Tim. No my my recollection from that was that um, I believe I had raised that that would be helpful, or someone had raised it. I thought that's what we were going to do, which is why when I sent back my recorded votes, um, I had told our executive committee that it was that we could do that overarching piece, and maybe I misunderstood from the last last meeting. So. We um, could, but then what was the point of everybody sort of part divvying it up? Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy and I'm happy to also um kind of do the same thing that Aaron just did too, if that's that's helpful. But what I can do is still keep people who really want to say no, that I, you know, my you know, I I can't support second look legislation, I can still keep track of that, even if it's not an official vote, if that would make okay. as part of the discussion. Chief Don. Quick question. Um, should we also say why or why not we approved or disapproved, or do you not want that reasoning in record? I personally don't find that particularly important at the moment because when this becomes um when this becomes, if it becomes, if any of this becomes legislation, there will be a chance for that in um, testimony. Okay. So if I say no against something, if anybody wants clarification, they should ask me then. Yep. Okay. You are next, Chief. Uh, I uh, approve on the, that question. Okay, thank you. Judge Morrissey is still out. Rebecca. Oh, uh, I just also, for the record, there's a chat, a request from someone here from the public requesting we, we make a, a record because they don't have the Excel spreadsheet. We do as panel members, but they don't know what we're voting on. Can Maybe we... we could go back to Elizabeth's idea of screen sharing. Okay. Sorry, that's uh, me. That's Lindsay Tiverge. I am voting for the executive director and in place of Jen Furpo. Um, so I do not have that spreadsheet. 
if it would be possible to share that. Uh, yeah. I was just looking to see if I could also drop it in. Um, Zoom is not liking it for me. If there's anybody else who has a copy of it, um, or you can send me your email and I can forward it, the email to you. I I'm so happy to share. I, I can forward really it to Lindsay right now. And just, it also did you. not want me to drop it into the chat. <laughs> I tried that. Thank you both. <laughs> I don't know why Zoom won't let us do that right now. Um, I will say um, just for the record, it, it might be best for every vote to be stated out loud, even if we have the spreadsheet. Um, yes, I agree. We haven't done that. You mean reading off each item, right? Yes. Yeah, I, specific. I agree. Okay, let me try to figure out where we are at this point. Anybody else got anything? Sheila. I, I'm just curious because if I wasn't on the panel and even being on the panel, um, for those who are in the community, I'm very curious of why people would vote no. You know, I'm less concerned of why people might vote yes because we have it, you know, we're voting on the document in front of us and we're saying yes. But I would really like for those who are voting that say no to just briefly say why. And I think that's important for our community to know. Discussion? Uh, I would second Sheila's point. I don't think that saying something on the record means that we have to put it in the report and bog down that process, which I understand is Aton's concern. But in this moment of critical vote, I, would, I think that is fair. I also would okay. request, uh, Elizabeth or whoever, Aaron, um, instead of worrying about the posting of the Excel spreadsheet, just the first question we're voting on or the question we're currently voting on, throw it in the chat or say it out loud so we have a, a record. I, okay, I said it out loud and that didn't work apparently. I'm happy to, uh, uh, all hands on deck. I can put um, the prompts we're voting on in the chat as we get to them. That's fine. I'll do that. My one other thought logistically is um, uh, the people who are voting are panel members. And I'm wondering if if Elizabeth has all of our names on a spreadsheet in a particular order, maybe Elizabeth could call on each of us for each prompt. I mean, I'm not trying to take any official duties away from you, Aton, as I opposed to care. you having to try to remember if you've called on everyone. Does that make I, sense? That, that okay. makes Perfect sense. My right. brain is a little addled. Yes. So I'm going to put the um, first prompt in the chat and um, turn it over to Elizabeth. Thank you, Jessica. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to list them as the members are listed on the website. Um, so if anybody is voting for someone or if by any chance the website is um, off, then that's fine. Also bear with me. I know we're missing some people today. I'm still going to say their name. We can pause and then move on uh, just until, just so I don't miss anybody. So uh, just to recap, uh, we are voting on um, the second look legislation should remain focused on addressing and correcting racial disparity. So first I have Jeffrey. I do not believe is here, but I'll pause in case I'm wrong. Um, and the next person as listed right on the website is Sheila. I'm voting in favor, affirming yes. Thank you, Sheila. Next is Aton. Yes. I already have your vote, uh, Chief. Next is Witchy. Who is not here? Tyler? Yes, uh, I'm going to vote for abstaining, um, and I'll give a rationale. There's a number of items that uh, DCF has to abstain from. Um, uh, there's there's several uh, there's several votes that that I have um, I have yeses on, and then the other one DCF's not taking official position on, so I'm going to abstain. Next is Susanna. 
second look, racial disparities, I vote yes. Uh, next is Jennifer Furpo, so I apologize. It's um, Lindsay, though. It's Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay Tiberge, I vote yes. We have Aaron's vote. Um, so next I have uh, Catherine Kessler. Um, that is now Daniel Bennett. This is a great exercise in which parts of the website we have to update. <laughs> I was just thinking that, yeah. Dan? Yes. Was that yes to my saying your name or yes, you're agreeing? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Got it. Uh, I have Tim up next. Thanks, and I'll just do a brief um, explanation as to probably all the votes. So last Friday, the executive committee, and this is approved by ATON in advance, I can just do this brief disclaimer, so I won't do it every time going forward. But um, the executive committee of state's attorneys looked at the draft report that Elizabeth had sent out last Friday. And on this one, perhaps because of my own oversight, um, I had basically just said a yes or no on this one. Um, so this would be in the minutes, essentially, just to record that that's the way that I asked the state's attorneys. And Farzana, who's uh, one of my bosses, can vouch for that. Um, but because of that, I'll, everything on second look will be a, a no for me, Elizabeth. So you can record that going forward. Um, and that's the process I did for all of the different sections. I I've had a long meeting with the states, uh, the executive committee of state's attorneys um, who directed my vote on this piece. And also uh, in January and December, I shared a list like a, the state's attorney's executive committee uh, response, questions, comments on this, which is in the report. And I'm very grateful for that. So um, no on this uh, reasons why I'm getting to Sheila's point um, listed in that memo that I produced in the report. Thanks. Thanks all. Uh, next, I have Dara. I, uh, apologies. I just unfortunately couldn't avoid traveling for the first 20 minutes of the meeting. Derek Medevnik, on behalf of the Department of Corrections and, um, for convenience sake, this, uh, will be applicable across all the policy positions that are being voted on tonight. DOC is going to abstain from taking any specific position relative to the items on the spreadsheet. Uh, next up is Judge Morrissey. I'm not sure if she's back yet, although she did, you know. She is, um, I, I got a note. She is, they're reviewing something during that piece. So she's, yeah, she's going to be caught up for a while. Okay. Uh, um. So next and last I have for Rebecca. So if there's anybody other than Rebecca who hasn't voted, please make sure they raise their hands. So I'm, I'm going to speak up then. <laughs> oh, Jess. I am also a panel member. Ah. Thank you. See, I and knew I, this was going to happen. And I vote yes. And now I'll turn it back to Rebecca. Rebecca, you're muted, you're Rebecca. Oh, I didn't unmute. Uh, I vote yes. <laughs> yes. Great. Ah, Jeff Jones is here as well. Um, get the audio going here. So Jeff, just um, I I didn't catch when you popped on, but Jessica put in the chat, the specific recommendation regarding second look that we are voting on right now, and that is second look legislation should remain focused on addressing and correcting racial disparities. Um, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, I'm yes. Thank you. Wonderful. 
And I know, Aton, you said at the beginning of this, um, no edits to the report. I absolutely understand that. Um, I do think we just need to do a read through for members because I think some of these people are not everybody is listed um, in the report as being a member. Yep. Um, and not, and and there might be some issues on the website too. Um, so just to be clear, in my mind, that ends that vote, and then it would be a, a next vote on okay. um, the next one, which means we might need a motion in a second, um, if you think appropriate, Aton, or we can just continue on. I think we can just continue on. We have always decided to do Robert's Light. I think Robert's Light really works here. I think we're just going to keep going. We have had these in front of us for weeks now. Um, there's no reason for there to be any question about it any longer. Let's just move along. Perfect, thank you. Um, so the second recommendation regarding second look is that legislation should be guided by science and data relating to recidivism, racial disparities, the age of the person when the crime was committed, the age of the time, of the person at time of sentence review and any other relevant factor supported by science and data. Um, and I will start with Jeff. I will vote yes. Next up is Sheila. I affirm yes. Eton. Yes. Stevens. Yes. Which he's not here. Uh, Tyler. Stain. And just to confirm, even if you've told me, I'm still going to roll call you. So appreciate you for bearing with me. Uh, Jessica. Yes. Susanna. Uh, second look, science and data. I vote yes. Cautiously, and just want to say on the record um, that, of course, this is with the understanding that sometimes data and the sciences can be weaponized against um, people from historically marginalized groups. So we want to be careful about it. But generally, yes, I'm going to vote yes on this one. Thank you. Uh, so next would be Lindsay voting for Jennifer. Yes. Erin? With my same preamble as last time, yes. Uh, Daniel? Yes. Uh, Tim? Uh, same preamble as last time, <laughs> copying Aaron's term and no. Uh, Derek? Abstain. Don't believe Judge Morris is back. Um, so, Rebecca? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so third, second look, uh, read second look legislation should commit to sentence reconsideration laws that apply to all persons sentenced to imprisonment without carve out offenses or age. And we will start with Jeff. Yes. Sheila? Firm, yes. Aton? Yes. Chief Stevens? I vote no. There could be, uh, there's always exceptions to any rule. Tyler? Stain? Jessica? Yes. Susanna? Second look, all persons, no carve outs. I vote yes. Uh, Lindsay for Jennifer Furpo. Yes. Erin? The Attorney General's office votes no on this one. Daniel? Yep. Uh, Tim? No. Derek? 
Department of Corrections abstains. I don't believe Judge Morrissey is back, so that leaves us with Rebecca. Yes. Okay. Uh, so this last second look um, vote is second look legislation should integrate restorative justice principles that are inclusive of reentry supports for both offenders and victims. So I will start with Jeff. You were a little garbled at the end, just so you know, so. Yeah, I didn't quite get that. I'm gonna abstain nothing either way. Okay, I can repeat it. Well, I'll just repeat it even if you, you continue to abstain. Second look, legislation should integrate restorative justice principles that are inclusive of reentry support for both offenders and victims. And uh, it is now in the chat as well. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to abstain because I'm not clear on my thoughts. Excuse me. Okay. Sheila. Firm, yes. Aton. Yes. Chief Stevens. Uh, yes, with a caveat that it doesn't, as long as it doesn't cause further harm to the victim. Uh, Tyler. You see, Apple abstain. Jessica. Yes. Susanna. Second look, restorative justice. I vote yes. Uh, Lindsay for Jennifer Furpo. Yes. Aaron. Yes. Uh, Daniel. Yes. Tim. Uh, aforementioned uh, explanation, then no. Derek. Pardon the corrections abstains. Judge Morrissey. I'm not even sure what question we're on right now. I'm sorry, I just barely came back. No worries. <laughs> uh, we are voting on the very last second look legislation which is that it should integrate restorative justice principles that are inclusive of reentry supports for both offenders and victims. Okay, and the judiciary is not taking a position. Thank you. All right, so I'm just gonna write down abstain for you, uh, Judge sure. Marcy, and Perfect. just because of roll call, um, I'm, I'm still gonna go through and ask everybody. So I, I appreciate you bearing with me as you continue to repeat that, even though I know that's, that's your stance on everything. Yeah, it's thank you. It's critical to do that, Elizabeth. It really is. So, so we should be clear then. I think Judge Morrissey that we voted on three other second look um, legislation prompts, and so uh, you, uh, uh, we're. I think we're all assuming that you're abstaining on behalf of the judiciary for all of them. Is that yeah. right? Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry about this back and forth. It's um. We're trying, we're trying to figure out if we can come back tomorrow. It's it's a uh, take us some unexpected turn. So sorry. Duty calls. Yeah. It does. Um, so that brings us to Rebecca. And the last question on restorative justice, second look, yes. Okay. So that rounds out the four votes on second look legislation. Right. Um and would bring us to the next section, which is juvenile justice. Um, and Aton, I'll, I'll let you decide. Uh, I know I know, we're doing Robert's Rule light, but I didn't know if people wanted to have any discussion on um, anything that we just voted on or anything like that. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Is there any discussion? Can I respond to Sheila, please? Aaron, go ahead. She, Sheila wanted to know for folks who are voting no, why? And I would just say that the attorney general office's why 
we um, do not support second look at this time is in the report. I'm happy to explain it further, but I didn't want to take up more time, nor did I want to ignore your request, Sheila. Sheila, go ahead. Um, thank you, Aaron. I appreciate that. I also just had a, another request. Um, if those who are voting, I'm not sure if everybody who is voting is on camera, but I think it would be appropriate for those who are panel members that are voting to be on camera when doing so. I'm going to respectfully decline to do that this time around to minimize distraction while I'm in transit. Okay, go ahead, uh, Elizabeth. Um, so, as I said earlier, that brings us to the juvenile justice section. Um, the first vote um, is that um, RDAP recommends that the minimum age of juvenile court jurisdiction increase from 10 to at least 12 years, and that any decision to raise um, minimum age juvenile court jurisdiction, the data and science driven. And I will start with Jessica. Yes, you caught me off guard. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you got added in a little strangely, so I apologize. <laughs> um, next is Jeff. Yes. Sheila? Um, yes. Aton. Yes. Chief Stevens. I'm going to say yes with a caveat saying I'm not sure about in cases of of in murder or something of that aspect. But overall, yes. Tyler? Yes. Susanna. Juvenile justice, minimum age, I vote yes. Lindsay for Jennifer Firpo. Yes. Aaron Jacobson. Yes. Uh, Daniel. Yes. Pam. You're oh, muted. muted. Sorry, dealing with a bit of a migraine on the left side of my face, so I'm gonna um, don't want to have you guys stare at my twitching left eye. Um, I'm vote. We're voting yes on this, um, just with the note from the state's attorney's executive committee that um, the the point of and this is just for the minutes as Aton and I have discussed, but yeah. the point of this is to um, you know when someone is engaging with certain conduct. The point is to engage them with services, um, get them rehabilitation in Title 33. And so um, ensuring that we have the ability to provide services to someone in this type of circumstance. Um, we vote yes, but just noting that we still need to be able to get services to folks. Thank you. And folks, yeah. sorry, let me interrupt for a moment. Um, just know that your caveats and stuff are going to be in the minutes. They are not going to be in the report unless they already are. Okay. Just there it is. Sorry. Go ahead, Elizabeth. No, no worries. Uh, next up is Derek. Department of Corrections abstains. Judge Morrissey. She might have had to cut off again. Um, so we're back up. Yes. So that brings us to the second juvenile justice recommendation, which is RDAP recommends that at a minimum there be a statutory requirement that the race ethnicity data following arrests and citations be uniformly filled out on the Judiciary's Form 101. So we will start back at the beginning with Jessica. Yes. 
Jeffrey. Yes. Yes. Aton. Yes. Chief Stevens. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Susanna. Uh, juvenile justice, uniform forms. I vote yes. Uh, Lindsay for Jennifer Purpo. Yes. Aaron Jacobson. Yes. Uh, Daniel. Yes. Uh, Tim. Yes. Darren. Sorry, did you say Derek? I did, yeah. Sorry. Uh, abstain. Uh, Judge Morrissey, if she's back. She's had to go again, I think. Um, that leaves us with Rebecca. Uh, yes. All right. So the third JJ related um, vote um, is, and in, in keeping this in mind, this one is connected to the, the second. Um, which is that RDEP recommends that both law enforcement perception and court perception of the youth is gathered. And I'll start with Jess. Um, well, I have a question about about this vote because the way I read the um, the spreadsheet was that we are supposed to be voting for one or the other of the last two props. Am I reading that correctly? I was gonna put them both in the chat so should I be saying which one I vote for or? Yeah, I so what I think is going to make it easiest for me, uh, just to be frank, is just to say, you know, say you support law enforcement perception um, and court perception, you'd say yes to this one. And then to number five, you would say, or not, excuse me, row five. So law enforcement perception and self-identification, you would say no. So you would, you would just vote opposite, essentially. Does that work for everybody or is there still confusion with that? Works uh, for me. Okay. Um, okay, well, I'm still gonna put both of them in the chat, but so I am voting um, no to law enforcement and court perception. I do see a hand raised. Don. Yes, I just want some clarification. So is the the these three questions, is, are we only picking one out of the three or where is that separation? Because I'm reading where it says row four, row five, or row six in the report, depending upon which is the majority. So you're only picking one out of the three, correct? Yeah, exactly. Okay. There's essentially... Um, different options for what we could go with. And we had a really robust conversation about this last month. So I think we're gonna know how we land, but obviously the vote is still really important because we didn't take a vote last last month. So they're all three of them say law enforcement perception. I wanna make that clear. So if you don't agree with law enforcement perception, you're gonna wanna vote no to all three of them, yeah. um, just to be very clear. Um, just, if you just, just think law enforcement perception, that's going to be the last one. Um, if you think law enforcement perception and court perception, that's the vote we're taking right now. Um, and then the next one is law enforcement perception and self-identification. So essentially, you're going to want to only say yes to one, um, although you could say no to all of them. You could you could be against all. Does that does that clarify? I know this one's a little confusing. It does. I'm and sorry. Elizabeth. To be, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry to be a pain. My spreadsheet only has two choices. Did is there an updated spreadsheet with three choices? Because I'm confused. My spreadsheet has RDEP recommends. So we did um filling out judiciary's form 101, right? Yes, that was the second one. So then my spreadsheet has RDAP recommends that both law enforcement perception and court perception of the youth is gathered, or RDAP recommends that 
law enforcement perception and self-identification of the youth is gathered gathered at a later time. I don't have a third choice. Nor do I. Okay. So there we did at the last meeting, um, I think I was the one who actually suggested it, have a suggestion of having the third option because we did not, we were not able to come to any kind of general consensus. Um, if we don't want that third option and don't don't want to vote on that, I think that's fine too. I think it's up to up to I mean I'm not a voting member, so I'll let you I'll let you all discuss. No, <laughs> I, I did you did you want to put all three in the chat? Because the the third one I have is RDAP recommends that only law enforcement perception of youth is gathered at this time. That's the that's the third option. So um, just because we have different spreadsheets, do okay. you want to put all three in the uh, chat so people can see it? Um, and then you pick one, two, or three. Um, I like that. I was about to say, would that make the vote easier? Just saying yeah. one, two, three. I like that. So three, if, if Jessica, if you want to put that in the chat, what we just discussed. And then when Elizabeth calls your name, you can say one, two, or three, or abstain, or I don't know, whatever else. <laughs> so just to be clear, and also I'll read them off. I did, I also just put them in the chat. So number one, is the first one that's right in the chat. Um, RDAP recommends that both law enforcement perception and court perception of the youth is gathered. Number two would be RDAP recommends that law enforcement perception and self-identification of the youth is gathered at a later time. And three would be RDAP recommends that only law enforcement perception of youth is gathered at this time. And Jessica just numbered them, perfect. So given that, Jessica, would you like to re-vote? I vote for number two, law enforcement perception and self-identification of the youth. Great. Next up was would be Jeffrey. I agree with number two. Vote for number two. Next up is Sheila. Same. So I guess no, yes, no. So I vote for number two, yes. Step is eight on. One. Next up is Chief Stevens. I vote for number two. And the reason, just as a caveat, um, Indian Child Welfare Act invokes special handling, and we haven't really talked about native issues much in this report, um, but there are special rules around uh, DCF, Indian Child Welfare, and other types of native things. So it's the uh, identification is important. I just, I just wanted to at least say that. Thank you. Tyler. Yeah. Um... I just want to say that all three of these solutions are are acceptable to me, so I'd be happy with any of them, but I'm going to vote for number two. Donna. Uh, juvenile justice, law, and self, number two. Uh, Lindsay for Jennifer Furpo. Lindsay? It appears we might have lost her. I don't see her. I see her. I'm looking right at her. Um, oh. Okay. Oh. okay. Rose, can you hear? You're sort of cutting in and out, but yeah. Okay. 
Not. Can you come back to me? Um, that next up would be Aaron. Uh, voting for number two. Daniel. Number one. Tim. Uh, number two. Derek? Abstain. Uh, Judge Morrissey. We're abstaining, thanks. Uh, Rebecca. Number one. Perfect. Um, Lindsay, are you back? And if not, perhaps, okay, perfect. I was gonna say perhaps you can put it in the chat. I see you for number one. So we're gonna word that. Okay, so that ends us for juvenile justice. Um, and brings us to community safety. So this one has 11 different votes. Yeah. Um, just to be clear. But um, Aton, did you want, I didn't know if you wanted discussion or I can just pop in, whatever. Let's what do up. people feel? Is there discussion? Okay, seeing none. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Um, so the first recommendation um, is training should include a readiness assessment. Who is ready to receive training that contextualizes racism in themselves and in the industry? The first step is Jessica. Yes. Uh, Jeffrey. Upstate. Sheila. Yes. Aton. No. Chief Stevens. I said no. I feel it's subjective and training should be for everyone. Tyler? Abstain. Susanna? Can you come back to me? Yeah. I'll listen to Jennifer Furpo. Lindsay, I think you may have frozen again. And now she's disappeared. <laughs> now she's actually disappeared. <laughs> like before. <laughs> um, we'll circle back. Erin. Uh, uh, the Attorney General's office is going to abstain on all of the community safety recommendations, including this one. Uh, Daniel? No. Tim? Uh, abstain. Derek? Department of Corrections abstains. Judge Morrissey, although I see her camera off. Right. So Rebecca. Yes. Okay, so that brings us back to Susanna. I'm really sorry. Um, I did review the draft and I didn't see this and I think it might be because I'm looking at an earlier draft, but can can somebody help me understand is the readiness assessment, I'm so sorry to ask a basic question like this, but 
Is it that if you're deemed not ready, then you don't get the training or that there is some intermediary step provided to you so that you become ready? I, again, apologize for having to ask this, but I want to be clear. I did not see that there was any um, build up to readiness. Is the proponent of that recommendation on the line and maybe can shed some light on what was meant by that? I can't answer that. Sheila, do you know? Do, um, can, what's the question? The person who... The question... I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just asking... Um, for the readiness assessment, is it that if you're deemed not ready, then you just don't get training until you are, or that there's something done to make you ready so that you can receive the training? Great question, because this is what I was going to bring up if we were going to have discussion around it, is the way I understand that is, and I think Chief Stevens um, had made this point a little bit, is not to say that if you're not ready, you won't receive the training or preclude you out of it. It is to assess your readiness with it. So that doesn't mean you won't receive the training, but I think in understanding what people's readinesses are, and maybe that those people who are more ready than others, then that's an assessment that can be done to understand then what is the next steps with that? What needs to be done to make these trainings either more effective or are there additional trainings coupled with what is already in place that is needed as well? So I think it's a little nuanced, but the way I understand it, it is not saying that somebody who isn't ready would not receive training. It's just seeing what their readiness is for that training. Chief? Chief, I see you with a hand. I don't want to interrupt. Um, I believe in the report I read, but somebody could verify this, that um, if in this section, if it's stated that they you weren't deemed to be ready, that it wasn't worth training you because you weren't ready to receive it. I think I, I think in that draft, you, you might have to go back and look at it, but I think that's what it, there was a specific that said, if you're not ready, then it's not worth training. Um, but you can verify that. At least on my draft, I thought that's what I saw. Okay. Um, Chief Stevens, I think that you you have you're correct in some of the um language that we've used to discuss this, but I don't think we came to a conclusion that it's not worth training somebody. We just wondered whether it would be um, what's the word for it? Um, whether they, without having buy in how much that training really affects their ability to shift or to show up in a different way. So I, again, I think that it's nuanced and I appreciate the questions, but um, I still feel like for me, I might vote a different way. If, if we're saying that if you're not ready, you, you fail the readiness um, assessment, then you don't get the training. I might answer no to this, but I'm voting yes, because my understanding is is that we want to assess the readiness of folks within within the um, training academy. Thank you all for um, allowing us to take those few minutes. Uh, I think that on this one, I'm going to, uh, I guess, vote no, just to lend an eye to post training effectiveness and information uptake. Um, Thank you. Um, and Lindsay, I see something in the chat. I would, is this regarding the current vote? Or a previous vote? Oh. That was a while ago. I think that was from the last vote. I do too. Are you? Because it's preceded by her saying, can you come back to me? And then she says, number one. I see her. I see her square, but not her face. Um, so perhaps I'll I'll just move on. Oh. Uh, sure. Yeah, I would just request that you do it in the chat so everybody can see. Okay. 
that would be great, Lindsay, if it's possible, if you could put it in the chat at least. She needs to abstain on this one because she needs further clarity. And I, I do think it's worth the question, does anybody want to change their vote given that some some of the conversation that happened, if that's okay? That's me. fine. Um, you want to start the vote over again? I was hoping to avoid that, but uh, I was just going to raise the question of, does anybody need me to? Okay, okay. I don't. Okay, sounds good. Then I'm going to move on. Uh, Go and I believe we have everybody for um, the readiness assessment question. Um, so the next recommendation is training should include the origins of policing in America, provide a view of the founding of policing in different areas of the country, and its change in function. Um, and just given some of the discussion that happened earlier, um, and, and given that um, I think some of these recommendations are, are nuanced for community safety, I'll, I will pause for discussion if anybody has questions before I start with Jessica. That seems better. I see none. Hi. Then Jessica. I vote yes. Uh, Jeffrey. Yes. Sheila. Yes. Aton. Yes. Chief Stevens. I'm going to abstain. Tyler. Going to abstain. Susanna. I vote yes. Lindsay for Jennifer Furpo, and hopefully you can put it in the chat. Perfect. Uh, Aaron Jacobson. The AGO abstains. Daniel. I apologize. No. Tim. Yes. Yeah. Abstain. Judge Morrissey. Um, we're abstaining. Thanks. Rebecca. Yes. Great. Uh, the third vote for community safety is training should include an overview of the many policies that have criminalized people of color and intersecting identities which contextualizes the use of policing um, over time in America. Any thoughts, discussion? Seeing none. Uh, Jessica. Yes. Jeffrey. Yes. Sheila. Yes. Aton. Yes. Chief Stevens. Abstain. Tyler. Abstain. Susanna. I vote yes. Jennifer. Um, so Lindsay, on behalf of Jennifer, I'm hoping you can put it in the chat. I see a yes. Great. Uh, Aaron. Abstain. Uh, Daniel. Yes. I apologize. That was a yes, correct? Yes. Yeah. Tim. Yes. Derek. Abstain. Judge Morrissey. Abstain. Thanks. Rebecca. Yes. Our next vote is training should include cultural competency, 
norms and behaviors show up differently in different cultures. Law enforcement should be familiar with cultures of different ethnic groups in Vermont and how they may intersect with policing. Any discussion or thoughts, questions? See none. Jessica. I vote yes. Jeffrey. Stay. Sheila. Yes. Aton. Abstain. Chief Stevens. Yes. Tyler. Abstain. Susanna. I vote yes. Lindsay for Jennifer Furpo. Yeah. Yeah. Not in the chat. Aaron? Abstain. Daniel? I'm going to abstain. Tim? Yes. Derek? Abstain. Judge Morrissey? She's gone. Oh. No. No, I'm back. The jury went home for the night, so I'm here now. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, we're abstaining. Thanks. Uh, Rebecca? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. We are making our progress, guys. <laughs> I don't feel, but we're, we're getting there. Um, so the next vote is about citizen review boards uh, should have independent. All board members must be free, relational and financial conflicts of interest with law enforcement. Any thoughts or questions? See none. Jessica. Yes. Oh, excuse me. Yes. I'm catching Rebecca's cold. Yes. <laughs> I know. Rebecca, you do sound. I hope I hope you get to have some tea and go to sleep after this. <laughs> um, Jeffrey. Would, would I uh, <clears throat> would it be much to ask you to repeat the question? I didn't know. Yeah, Citizen review boards should have independence. All board members must be free of relational and co financial conflicts of interest with law enforcement. No. Sheila. Yes. Aton. Yes. Chief Stevens. Um, can I ask a clarifying question, or did I am I too late for that? Clar Go for I, it. When um, when you say um, not having um, relational interests with law enforcement, I guess my question is: if you don't have any kind of law enforcement training, how can you make logical decisions on what you're looking at? Um, if does that mean you don't have like it's not a mother, brother, father, or something, or that you just have no relationship with law enforcement at all. Sheila, I hate to keep picking on you, but you're the only member of the subcommittee who's here. Okay, so what is the question? I, I was just asking if, when you say no relational um, interest in law enforcement, does that mean you have no contact with law enforcement whatsoever? Or at which, which means either you're related to somebody in law enforcement or you haven't had the train, like would, could you, is, is training in law enforcement practices considered you have a relationship with law enforcement? No, this is specifically about relational, like family cousins, like re relational um, interest and financial conflicts. So it's about the actual relationship that people have with people. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to abstain. Tyler. 
We will abstain. Susanna. Eyes vote yes. Lindsay for Jennifer Furpo. I'm gonna keep going and hopefully yeah. Lindsay put it in the chat. Good like, idea. And we can circle back if um, we don't see it. Um, Aaron. Abstain. Daniel. Abstain. Tim. Yes. Derek. Abstain. Judge Morrissey. Abstain, thank you. Uh, Rebecca. Yes. So we're just waiting on um, Lindsay's for that. So Lindsay, if I don't know if you can hear me, but um, just pop it in. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Or the abstain. And that um, leaves us to the second question on citizen review boards or a statement, I should say. A citizen review boards should have authority. A board should be able to review internal and external investigations and hold law enforcement leaders accountable. This would be a really good time to think about what the question is and decide whether or not you need further discussion. Okay, I see none. Elizabeth, back to you. Hey, Jessica. Yes. Jack. Yes. Sheila. Yes. Aton. Yes. Chief Stevens. I will abstain. Tyler. Uh, abstain. Susanna. I vote yes. Lindsay for Jennifer Furpo. I will continue on while you are putting that in the chat, Lindsay. Uh, Aaron. Stay. Uh, Daniel? I'm staying. Him? Yes. Derek? DOC abstains. Judge Morrissey? Abstain. Rebecca? Yes. Okay, and I see Lindsay your abstain. Mm -hmm. Pour that down. Um, so our next vote is about decoupling mental health. Addressing mental health should be explicitly separated from law enforcement practice. Instead, solutions for emergency mental health services should be explored. Local and external organizations are already exploring and attempting to implement them. Exploration of these solutions coupled with political and financial commitment to these alternatives should be considered. Any discussion? I see none. Elizabeth, can you read it once more just so I can make sure I don't have any typos? Yeah. Decoupling mental health. Addressing mental health should be explicitly separated from law enforcement practice. Instead, solutions for emergency mental health services should be explored. Local and external organizations are already exploring and attempting to implement them. Exploration of these solutions coupled with political and financial commitment to these alternatives should be considered. I vote yes. Jeffrey. I vote yes, but I'm not, it's a little deep question 
and it goes both ways, but I will vote yes. Sheila. Yes. Aton. Yes. Chief Stevens. Abstain. Tyler. Abstain. Susanna. I vote yes. Lindsay for Jennifer Furpo. Hopefully we'll be in the chat. Um, Aaron. Abstain. Thank you, Lindsay, for yours as well. Uh, Daniel. Abstain. Tim. Abstain. Sarah. Abstain. Judge Morrissey. Abstain. Rebecca. Yes. Um, eliminate SROs. Eliminating SROs is not new to Vermont legislature. Bills during the 2021 to 2022 session were introduced. The Vermont legislature uh, should explicitly incentivize schools that replace their SRO programs with school student social services, such as nurses, counselors, clubs, emotional, mental health, education, etc. Any discussion? Okay, Jessica. Um, I vote yes, and I will put this in the chat right now. Jeffrey. Epstein. Sheila. Yes. Aton. Yes. Chief Stevens. Yes. Tyler. I abstain. Susanna. I vote yes. Lindsay for Jennifer Furpo in the chat. Um, so Aaron. Yes, I mean sorry, <laughs> abstain. Abstain, okay. Abstain is hard for me to say. <laughs> abstain. <laughs> uh Daniel. No. Tim. Abstain. Dara. DOC abstains. Judge Morrissey. Abstain. And Rebecca. Yes. And Lindsay, I see your abstain in the chat. Hey. We only have three more votes, guys. Yep. Um limit officer quantity based on population in a state with one of the lowest crime rates in the country there may not be a need to have a quantity of law enforcement officers higher than the national average the vermont legislature should set a guideline to limit the amount of law enforcement officers in each regional scope per its relative population in relation to the national average mm -hmm. Any discussion? I see none. Okay, hey, Jessica. I vote yes. Jeffrey. Yes. Gila. Yes. Aton. No, and the reason I vote no is because there are operational issues that cannot be foreseen that may impact the number of officers that are necessary. Chief Stevens. Uh, I say no, um, that it's up to the community and even if you hired more police, maybe it'll reduce the workload and mistakes on other police and uh, maybe to increase more uh, people of color officers. Like I said, and maybe reduce some of the workload. Tyler. 
I will abstain. Susanna. I'm going to vote no, um, not because I think that we should try to artificially maintain a certain minimum number of police just because we say we want to, but I think that the issues we're having are more matters of quality and not quantity. And so uh, I'm going to vote no on this because I'm not certain that this is um, as impactful a solution as, say, making other improvements to the ways in which the existing force behaves. Thank you. And Lindsay, I see your no, the chat, thank you. Uh, Aaron. Stain. Daniel. I'm a, I'm a big no on that one. Tim. No. Derek. Abstain. Judge Morrissey. Abstain. Rebecca. Yes. Um, our second to last, uh, reinvest in human services, community-centered responses. The savings earned by limiting law enforcement officer quantity should be reinvested in community-centered response initiatives and human services, addressing criminality and especially the disparities that already exist must be a multi-pronged effort. Any discussion? I have a question um, for the group. Do we see this as being inextricably linked to the previous one? That is to say, savings from reduction in police force um, if we don't, you know what I'm asking. Yes, I understand that if you're not going to limit officer quantity based on population, then the savings that this question proposes are not going to be there. Therefore. Also, also in my mind, if you if I didn't agree with limiting law enforcement, I would vote no on this. But I do agree that we should put more resources into human services and community centered responses. So the way it's written, I'd have to say no. But if that limiting the law enforcement was out of there, I would vote yes. Well, yeah, that's how I feel. Sorry, Tom, go ahead. No, that's OK. I have to say um, Elizabeth's rendition of this issue in the in that section of the report is very accurate. And I think you all just need to know that. It's not like something got lost in translation, is what I'm saying. It seems to me like if somebody voted no to the one beforehand, it actually makes more sense to vote abstain yes. than to vote yes or no. Correct. Agreed. I guess that's just a recommendation. <laughs> Do people feel ready for a vote or? Right, any more discussion? I'm just kind of curious if Elizabeth, when you say that is the assumption that people who are abstaining are abstaining because it's related to the financial component specifically, is that why? Yeah, exactly, because they decided to not support a limit and this question is specifically about what to do with the money that's left over from that support um so okay cool i voted yes on the last one i'm voting yes on this one Jeffrey. I abstain. Sheila. Um, yes, and I just want to say that um, even if there wasn't money from this, uh, from the other question, that I still think that we should do it. So yes. Okay. Eitan. Abstain. Chief Stevens. Abstain. 
Kyler. Abstain. Susanna. I vote yes on this one. I do not see that as in conflict with my no vote on the previous one. I think any cost savings that we incur either from intentionally reducing the force or letting it drop by attrition should be reinvested in this manner. And that even if there's no savings from reduction in force, we should still make every effort to find the money to do this either way. Thank you. Lindsay, I see you're abstain. Aaron. Abstain. Daniel. Abstain. Tim. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um... Was it Susanna's explanation? When I explained this to the executive committee of state's attorneys, they sort of interpreted interpreted it to mean if there is, they were they were opposed to a reduction in the manner of the prior, but if there was going to be, then it should certainly be invested in in an array of areas. So um, because of that, I'm I'm going to vote yes, even though it appears in conflict with the prior. Derek. Yeah. DOC abstains. Judge Morrissey. Abstain. Rebecca. Yes. Okay, this is our last question. Um, decoupling traffic stops. Uh, Vermont statutes currently restrict traffic enforcement activity to law enforcement. Traffic laws are still laws that would require enforcing. However, the report identifies the reports, excuse me, identify traffic stops as a negative interaction between police and the community that exasperates disparities and furthers the divide um, in the community law enforcement relationship, especially with people of color. The legislature should make an exception to towns seeking to explore alternative ways to enforce traffic laws. For example, the town of Brattleboro has made a commitment to considering operational alternatives if they become legal in Vermont. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Don't see any. Jessica. I vote yes. Jeffrey. Yes. Sheila. Yes. Aton. Yes. Chief Stevens. I'm going to abstain, but I want to also make a statement that I don't think that traffic tickets should be used to pay for the coverage of the police force because that provides an incentive to give people tickets and stop them. We've seen that in the news and, and things in the past. So I'm I'm on the fence, so I'm gonna I'm gonna abstain. Tyler. I'm going to abstain. Susanna. I vote yes, thank you, Elizabeth, for going going through this with us. <laughs> uh Lindsay for Jennifer Furbo um in the chat so i will move to Aaron. abstain and i want to take a moment to thank sheila and witchy for putting together the report our abstention is not somehow calling out any lack of work or all of the learning you provided us really really compelling presentations to the panel as well so thank you all daniel <laughs> I'm going to abstain. Thank you. Tim. No. Derek. Abstain. And thank you, everyone, and for all the work that was reflected in the report and in this process. Judge Morrissey. Abstain. Thank you. And Rebecca. Yes. <clears throat> Yes. Hey, okay, and Lindsay, I see you're abstaining and I'm recording it and then we're done. 
Okay. Ah. Uh, I need to see it. Certainly. So if you can, in some magical technological way, get this to me, that would be really cool. Um, the other thing I want to note here is those of you who were um, around for the 2019 report will recall that we had the non-consensus area, non-consensus reports. Um, what this process does, and I'm kind of happy about it, is it makes that very specific for each question all the way through the report. And I think that's important for the legislature to see. Um, one of the broad um, outlines that they're going to notice, I uh, assuming they read it, uh, um, is that the community members were very, very much um, behind almost everything with some variations. And there were a couple things that people didn't have quite the same feeling about. But in, there was a very broad distinction between government and the community. The beauty of the RDAP is that it reveals those things. That is the beauty and the strength of this panel. Um, and if, and I'm sure at some point I'll be called on to testify when this is submitted, um, you can be certain that I will point that out. And I will make a point of also saying to the legislators, they need to look at the vote counts and they need to see who is what to get a really good picture of what goes on in the state. All right. Um, I am going to do sometime tomorrow. God only knows when I will do one last make it pretty effort to edit. I will put in what Judge Morrissey has asked to have in a certain spot. I will make the move that the Attorney General has asked for. Um, but that's really it. And um, I don't know if I find... I, I have to admit I've gotten goggle-eyed. I mean, I feel like... For me, this report has turned into Rocky Horror, right? Where you sit there and you like can say the whole movie. Um, and that's kind of how this report has become for me at this point. So that doesn't actually make me the best copy editor, but I will do what I can. Um, got lots of experience in life doing it. And I will submit it on the 15th, first thing in the morning. Chief Don. I had a quick question, Anton. <clears throat> um, do you think it's worthwhile to show per capita, what the incarceration rate is for minorities in the state, in at least attached to the report. Or when I was talking to Jessica, I think she was surprised about how many Native Americans in the state of Vermont per capita were incarcerated. Um, and most people don't realize that. But I don't know if it makes sense, but I just thought I would um, at least mention, would that be important information or not? Um, it would. I don't see why it can't go into an appendix. Why not? It might just give the legislators a little insight per capita what um what the what the rates are just so they know who's affected and how. And as Susanna's just pointed out in the chat, I think if we have the data, there's zero harm in including it. Um the one thing I will ask, oh, you're not where I thought you were. Okay. You've like gone away altogether. Um God, this is such a fun process. Um, uh, can someone write? Oh, there you are. Hi, you moved. Never mind, Chief. Can you write that? What was that? What was that, Anton? Can I write that? Can you write the appendix with this? Oh, I mean, I can provide the data. I'll work with Jessica. I think she might already have it. Um, that would be great. 
that would be great. I'm simply admitting I don't have time. I I and I I hate saying that. You know I hate saying that. I want I'm I want, best I work best with deadlines though. When will you need it by? I would like it by let's move things. I'd like it by noon on the 15th. That would Thursday. be Thursday. okay. Yeah. It's after tomorrow. I mean, Bye. yes. <laughs> Chief, I'm happy to I'm happy to work with Chief Don. It I mean it's just going to be probably a one pager that yeah, sure. you know collects the most yeah. current data we have yeah. from yeah. probably right. the DOC website and maybe on another website. Yeah, okay. yeah. Cool. Jessica, I was just thinking of more of a chart, just so they have a visual, not 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 elaborate, just a chart. And I'm just letting you all know the grammar stuff. I'm I'm. I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm letting it go. I've gotten as much as I can. <laughs> you know, use the language as well as you can, people. God bless and good luck. Love you all. Tim. Um, I just wanted to say that I thought this process was exceedingly fair. I thought the chair did a phenomenal job of rallying everybody. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you. And the subcommittee folk, thank you. And, um, you know, I, I just think it was, it's difficult to rally this many folks um, in the report writing process. And uh, Sheila, same same to you and Witchy yeah. for just putting a lot into the community piece. Once I, once I looked through it um, and each of the different things, it was a lot of nuanced content and a pretty short report, which is very difficult to do, um, having weeded through my fair share of government, you know, reports. So I think it's it's very helpful. Um, I think the data at the end is a good idea, and I just wanted to thank the chair for his for his leadership and all this, and and to all the subcommittee folks. So thank you, Tom. My pleasure, and you all know I love you. So um, <laughs> I'd give you all flowers if I had that kind of salary, but I don't. Um, Elizabeth. Yeah, I was just going to offer if you need any help, especially with the JJ section, um, given the three different options and the vote or even tally, I, I did just send you the, the spreadsheet. Thank um, you. But if you need any help with any of that, I am definitely around and able to help. Okay. Okay. Cool and groovy. Um, God, have we did it. I, I've like lost my purpose for living now. I'm sorry. There's like... Hold on. There's an agenda. I need to look at it. <laughs> Your purpose for living uh, continues on at least through Thursday. Right? Yes. No, I'm right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and well beyond that, Aton. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I just was like, oh, my God. I've just like been so focused on this. I can't. I, I'm like brain dead. All right. Susanna, the, it is now turned over to you. You are the next item. A discussion concerning staffing of another legislative body. Yes, thank you. Um, this is going to be super duper fast. So um, I was um, contacted for assistance in identifying potential um, uh, pe people who could potentially be appointed to um, the Sentencing Commission. And um, And I could think of people, maybe, but that's a hard one. It's mm -hmm. a hard sell. And uh, the first thing I thought was I should consult people who know things. So I wanted to bring it here. Um, I also didn't really want to make it hot. So this was not a huge public request that I sent out in an email to 600 people. Um, but I did not just want to pick names out of my brain and send that back to my inquirers. So I am humbly coming to you, um, Chief, in the chat. The question is, what was the commission at the Sentencing Commission? Um, so I'm humbly coming to you all with requests for if you have um, anyone you know who you think would be well-suited. Um, and by well-suited, I don't mean a culture fit. I mean a culture ad or a culture upturning of apple cart, right? Um, That's it. That's the pitch. Um, I guess, I don't know. When do you need the spy? Yeah, great question. I guess by about three weeks ago. So whenever you <laughs> can get through it. 
Can you? Oh, hold on. Sorry, Sheila. I think you might have sent something out to us a month or so ago. Is this true or maybe not? And it, whether you did or not, is it possible to drop in the chat what the asks are of this committee? Like how often do they meet, et cetera, et cetera? Or is there more description so that if we're thinking about potential candidates to give to you, I know they're going to ask me more questions. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Yes. But also ignore everything I just said for the last three minutes. It's not the sentencing commission. It's the parole board. My bad. Susanna, you got yeah. me very excited. <laughs> as, <laughs> as vice chair That's a huge difference. <laughs> I was just about to, 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 to uh, are, you, are you sure? Don't be mad. Somebody are, gave are you food. sure, Susan? No, sorry. I've been given food during this meeting. Now my blood sugar spiked. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm delirious. It is the parole board. Um, several oh, seats are God. coming up, kind of at the same time. So we're not we're not necessarily looking for for one name. Um, sorry, big whoops. But the request still stands. And yes, Sheila, I can send along some more info. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I want to know what they do and stuff so I can think of who might be a good fit. Um, I, I mean, I guess I can go online and do that. I don't need you to do that. I'm sorry. I'm old. I, I, I forget about websites. Listen, I'm asking y'all for a favor. I can send you the info. It's the least I can do. Okay. And should we get back to you just individually, send you an email and such? That would be perfect. Thank you. Okay. And is there any information you can tell us about the parole board now? Or what is it again now? It is the parole board. Is there any information you can currently give us, um, like their terms or how many people are on it? What is currently the racial makeup? I presume that they're all people who live in Vermont. Is, is there any just brief details that you could give us? Yeah, I want to let me put all of that together in just a super quick blurb. Thank you, Aaron, for putting the link to the uh, to the board in the chat. Um, I can tell you that multiple seats are coming up uh, at the same time. So um, so there are going to be multiple openings and um, and the other details, I'll, I'll try and put them together into quick, easy bullet points for you. Thank you. Susanna, this is Rebecca. Did you did you mention the the deadline of of getting these names in? Um, yeah, I, I know. So the, yeah, so in particular, uh, let me see. The seats are coming up. Actually, the there are two terms expiring at the end of February. Um, and I think that there's uh, potentially a third one. Uh, that's coming up around the same time. So um, I think that the appointer would like to have some options, um, I guess, in the next couple of weeks to prepare for that uh, so that there's a seamless transition. Again, I was asked this already some time ago. And of course, um, it's not really fair to load a last minute request onto you all. But yeah, if maybe in the next week you can... Just advance me any names that you think may be good. Great. Anything else, folks, about this? Okay, cool. Thank you, Susanna. Uh, Sheila, now we're on to you. The discussion concerning recent events in Burlington, Vermont. Oh, that's... Really great. I actually, well, two things. I actually wanted to see if Reverend Mark Hughes wants to speak upon that, if he's still in the space, which it looks he is. Like. He is. And then after that, um, if we could turn to community who is on here to make sure that there isn't any questions or thoughts from the community on anything that we discussed today to make great. sure they have an opportunity before we close out the meeting. So Reverend Mark Hughes, would you like to um, talk about some things that are going on? Thanks, Sheila. I'm, I'm not feeling well tonight, so I'm going to stay off camera and 
it's going to blow your mind, <laughs> but I'm going to be really brief. Um, I think that, you know, one of the things that we've been looking at lately is, is you know, of course, the ACLU, um, uh, everybody saw the, um, the litigation and, uh, um, you know, did, really what it goes to is, is uh, a couple things that, you know, because for those who are not familiar with the the issue, uh, there was a, um, a young man who's in our circle uh, back a, a couple, two or three years ago, had a situation where his mother, who was, um, she's, she's, you know, she's a, a white, a, a middle-aged white woman who's, and he, he's um, African-American, a uh, mixed race child. And, um, you know, she um, found out that he was shoplifting and called the police and that just turned south really, really quickly. And it, it ended up with him in handcuffs and, and being uh, ultimately sedated with ketamine and carried out of his house. Um, so that's, that's one of the challenges and it, it's just, there's so many layers that go into it, you know, from her calling the police in the first place and, and but also there's just generational story about uh, the, the uh, DCF and uh, the disproportionate rate in which um, young black children are being removed from their homes and uh, it gets into a use of force, it gets into um, the administration of uh, uh, ketamine and situations like that and, you know, what are the rules there and uh, and it, it just goes on and on with uh, police oversight and so forth. So it's just a really complex uh, challenge. And uh, so we were speaking out on that in, in a number of different ways. Um, I, I think that I think it is a, this this is probably a good place to have that conversation and also um, to talk about solutions. You know, to, to find out right. where. Um, we, we have, you know, where, where are our challenges and where do we have room uh, to make appropriate adjustments so we don't have to see things like this again and moving forward. And I told you that I was gonna blow your mind because I'm done. That's all I'm gonna say for right now. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. And, and thank you, Sheila. I What pops to mind immediately for me is the, the part of the um, report that Witchy and Sheila wrote that refers to, um, oh God, the citizen the civilian review boards. That's what immediately comes to mind is that, um, and that that will go forward in the next couple days. I wish we had time to add on a little something in the report about this, but we don't. <laughs> but I, I, I'm hoping that that will, that will come through. And I want that in the minutes. Anybody else? Comments? Excuse me, this is a bit out of line, Mark. You might want to... Um... Get in touch with me. I'm after 10 years on the ACL board. Now I can talk about it because I've been off just before this happened. I responded the next day after this incident, and I have a lot of intel and a huge amount of anger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, can I add? This is Rebecca. Um, um, Hey, Tan, I appreciate you tying this into our sort of looking back report, but maybe to not let this fall off. I think when we go into our post report mode, yes, I'm thinking about okay, what are identifying what are our priority items, yes. drop down projects for this panel for the coming year. And I would encourage us to consider adding this or again, maybe teasing out specifically issues that we want to address, maybe bigger than this case, or maybe it is this case, but whatever it, it to add that to the list. Got it. Thank you. Will do. Will do. Anything else from anyone on this? That was good. Thank you. Okay. Did um, did Rebecca yeah. did Rebecca invite community members to have input? 
Well, that was where I was going next. I was about to announce that, yes. Um, I would just say, I, I would echo most of what Reverend Mark Hughes said. Um, the, the things that jump out for me that, you know, may, maybe the training discussion of the report and maybe the review board, but I don't hear anything talking about um, escalation and de-escalation. Um, and a lot of the stories in the Burlington area that we've heard and national stories often seem to center around police who escalate a situation rather than de-escalate it. Um, and it, it feels like that that needs some attention. And the other thing was, I feel like I heard a year or two ago that there was some discussion of policy around the use of ketamine, and it feels like that ought to get some attention as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mark. I knew I couldn't be quiet. Ah! <clears throat> I, I just, I really want to uh, speak to just, uh, and just, a, there's a compassionate part of this that, um, that just goes into um, these um, youth, because this, well, first of all, this is, a, this, th this child was removed from his home when he was five months old and separated from his siblings, and they were dispersed across the, the state. It's just such a sad story, the whole thing, uh, and just how, um, you know, here, you know, this 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 woman who's struggling to raise this uh, child, and she's culturally challenged, and she just, you know, she didn't know what to do but to call the police. She didn't know better, and so there's that piece, you know, you just don't want to call the police, you know, if you want to do everything you can do to avoid that, you know, if you have you know, if you're dealing with a black or a brown youth, so there's that. So I guess what I'm saying is, is there's a, there's a, you know, a cultural competency component mm -hmm. to, um, first of all, to, you know, taking a child in uh, that's, um, you know, you know, that's a, that's a black or a black or brown child, you know, and where else are these children going to go? You know, we, there's this, there's this vicious system that, is removing youth from their homes and they are being removed, you know, at, at highly disproportionate rates, uh, black and brown children, they are. And they're and that those are the facts, those are the numbers. And um and there's where are they gonna go? Where they where they go is they're gonna obviously they're gonna, most of them are gonna go to white families. So, you know, exploring, you know, if I've had some conversations with a, a couple, two or three folks, but we're exploring alternatives. How do we figure out ways in which we can provide safety nets um, for some of these black and brown youth that are being raised in these white homes, as well as assistance to some of these white parents that are that are tasked with uh, these these awesome responsibilities uh, with these youth. Some, you know, they, they need help, they need help. And so I think that's the compassionate side that I'm looking at is, is, you know, putting together those programs and services um, that assist these youth as well as uh, these parents uh, so we can um, not just so we can avoid this, but so these youth can actually thrive at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is relevant. Um, let me know what I can do. I uh, most people don't know this, but until I came to my current family, I was in the system. I was in 21 foster homes between the ages of eight and 13. If there's something I can do, I have a lot of experience, I guess is the best thing to say. And uh, let me know. Anything else? Okay, thank you. I wanna keep it short because I know we have two and a half minutes. <laughs> uh, oh, go ahead, Derek. <laughs> was the invitation to anything else specifically connected to this conversation or was that just a general for the good of the order or anything else? I'm sorry, to what are you referring? The invitation to anything else, was that just an open call for any other quick announcements or any other points of relevance, or was it part of the thread of the 
conversation that we were just having. I believe it was part of the thread. Okay, then I'll unraise my hand. Okay. Um. <laughs> all right. Uh. We've been asked to testify. This is you're going to all get really pissed off. Just so you know, there are two bills that are like 65 pages long. Tim, what are the bills again? H and at H Y H and X. Uh, I think one of them um, is 645. Yes. That uh, is and the one. The one. I don't know the other one. Um, 543. Okay. I think okay. it's, it's, I think it's H534. Oh, well, oh. No, I know, I know, just for the record. Having yeah. one of those little dyslexic yeah. moments. <laughs> okay. Um, Martin Lalonde wants our input. He is literally putting off the vote on this in committee until he gets input from the RDAP. Now, I made an executive decision because we had this in front of us, the report. And I was like, Martin, I'm sorry. We've got a statutorily required bit of work that has to happen now. And I was a bit annoyed that we didn't find out about it until really about a week ago. Um, literally the last week in which we were working on the report. I mean, it, it, there was just no, I'm going to get yelled at no matter what, and I don't really care, but um, there just was no way of doing this. Now, they still want our feedback. Um, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I am not, um, uh, 534 is tomorrow at 1.00. Is there anyone here who wants, as a representative of the RDAP, to go to that? I don't. And I don't because I don't feel um I I don't feel that I was really quite prepared. I was busy working on the report. Um, Tim? No, and I'm not uh, volunteering for that. Just this is one of those topics, and I'm sure Rebecca has a similar thought where I know Rebecca and I have both testified on uh, 534 and um, I, because my, de my department has testified extensively for many hours on both those bills, um, I wouldn't want to get in the way of the RDAP or community members on the RDAP stating positions on this, but I would have to, um, my position would be distinct probably, um, and my hours of testimony on both topics are kind of speaking for themselves, if that makes sense. Well, and that's a good point, Tim, is that, again, it's back to that, the 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 inherent and productive split on the panel between community members and governmental actors. So, but it what it does mean is a lot of reading really quickly. I don't want to pursue it further right now because he wrote me an email this afternoon and I'm trying to remember what it was all about, but it's like, I can testify next week about 645, the restorative um, justice bill. Would you all do me the courtesy of getting back to me about opinions about this thing? You know, what we've done this before, what you want me to testify about what you want me to say people write little you know how we've done this people write paragraphs and i go in and i string them together in an interesting way and bring out major themes and all that sort of stuff and i will do that again um but that needs to okay hold on that needs to we need to at least deal with that um Susanna, you had your hand up and then Erin had her hand up. Yeah, I um I'm sorry this isn't exactly the, the question that you're asking. I the question you're asking is what do we want you to talk about um in the context of these two bills? But honestly, I'm alarmed at the number of relevant bills that this panel has not been asked to testify on. Um just top of the dome, there's 
um, S-195, um, they're talking about the Big 12 expansion. They're talking about interrogation practices. They're talking about getting earned time from educational programs in carceral settings. Um, they're talking about ankle monitors. I mean, there's a lot happening right now. Retail, th there's so much. And I'm worried that we're being pigeonholed into these two bills when there's a lot of really alarming things that are moving super quickly in these committees of jurisdiction. And so I guess that if I have to directly answer your question, because I know you don't like it when we don't do that, um, I would say we we should we should be represented on both of these bills and a plethora of others. Uh, ORE has been tracking a bunch. Um, and I'm and I'm happy to send a list with links and a quick write-up to each to each one. Um, because we came prepared tonight to talk about some of them if necessary. But I know each of you individually has also been following these bills on your own. And and I don't think that our parallel individual presence is the same as the unified RDAP presence. So I think that's a conversation we really have to have. And sadly, there is very little time to have it. Um, yeah, I I am not. You should know I had a fit. <clears throat> I like yelled a lot um, and have been promised that a conversation will take place about how to get this stuff before the RDAP in a timely and reasonable fashion. Um, I said, well, that's nice because we had that conversation last session and here we are. Um, as I say, I was not the most politic that I might have been, but I didn't feel like I was needed to be politic at that moment. Um, you will also note on the agenda a new item, and that is going to be henceforth and forevermore part of the ag all agenda, relevant and known policy updates, hyphen legislative moves, et cetera. This is because, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting <laughs> over a cold. Um, actually, RSV. Um, and um, this is just going to be part of it because this keeps happening. And I have a lot of re I have a lot of ideas about why I don't have proof necessarily. So I'm not going to put that out there to be put into public minutes because it will simply potentially be libelous. Um, but I, I this has got to stop. It's simply got to stop. Chief. Uh, thanks for all your work, Antoine. Uh, Aton. Um, I just want to say that if they're going to start having people do a lot of testimony, they should they should allow RDAP to have a, a staff member or something to go through these things. Because like I said, I have hardly enough time to be on this panel, let alone be you. doing a lot of tests. And I think I'm not the only one, right? We do have full-time oh. jobs and we... <laughs> You know, and nobody's getting paid for it, and they're they're asking a lot. Um, but I think I think if they're really wanting a lot of input going forward on a lot of these things, they need to provide that space and that staff to do it because you don't some of these things you don't want to half ass, right? I mean, you you don't want to just throw out there and testify for the sake of testifying. Um, well, so. and when I first put this out there, Chief, um, Witchy got mad. I mean, Witchy was like. A two-day turnaround on 65 pages? Are you kidding for what they give us for a per diem? No. Well, and you can also tell them. I mean, I think based on open meeting law, I mean, if you want to speak for the RDAF, you have to have a meeting and you have to make a discussion and vote on it. I mean, there's not even time to do any of that stuff, right? I mean, if you're if you're really asking somebody to represent an entire, you know, um, committee, I mean... You, Anyway, I just you also got to be careful not to get in trouble by just saying, "Oh, okay, just everybody send me this stuff," and nobody's had discussions or voted. No, on. I know, yeah. I know, I I I totally understand that, and I don't want to I don't want to just brush that off. I I'm at the moment sitting around and feeling guilty, but I really didn't feel like I I was in a bad spot. I made a judgment call. That's all I can say. It may have been wrong. I'm sorry. Um, but I don't know what else I could have done at that moment. We had a report to get done. 
Yeah, no, no, don't be sorry. I'm just saying that we got to be careful that somebody doesn't violate and open meeting laws and all that stuff to make right. decisions without having decisions. <laughs> well, and there's that. We can't, you're you're absolutely right. We used to do that. We're not doing that anymore. So we got a problem. Um, yeah. And I'll deal with it tomorrow. I'll deal with it. I will see. Hey, I just wanted to also say, like, I think in statute, RDAP is limited in the number of times it can meet, which is another negative pressure on our ability to discuss things as they come up. So maybe worth reminding um, the legislative folks that I believe there is a limit. I think when I first joined the RDAP, I looked at all the materials I think you sent ten. me ten, 10 times, right? Yeah. We've never listened to it for <laughs> obvious reasons. Mark, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, re no worries to apologize. I I just want to just suggest that if, if there's, well, first of all, just let me be the consummate stater of the obvious, the guy that calls out the mounts the elephant in the room is, is that most of the system representatives um, that are on this committee, you, you, you guys have folks that are showing up uh, in these um, um, in these uh, committees and testifying uh, on these bills that we're talking about. Um, and, uh, you know, at a minimum, maybe it would be productive for um, for you to uh, kind of link up with the folks that are yeah. speaking on your behalf in those committees and bring that. I mean, if we can't push from this committee, from this panel out into your respective areas at a minimum, bring back what they're testifying to into this okay. body. Um, because, okay. you know, these, it's not like, us and them, the, every you know everybody on here. You've got mostly everybody on here, and I know because I, I read the I read the notes. You've got folks that are showing up in those committees, and you know it's, they're part of your department. So um, yeah, there, there's a process thing that that needs to be worked out here. Um, and yeah. um, you know I'm I, I'm unapologetic about just calling that out uh, because I think it, it it really needs to be talked about. Yeah. And I, I, I just kind of, yeah, people were <laughs> a little alarmed that I was as angry as I was, but I was like, uh, what did you expect? So Aaron. Yeah, I think it's, this is a tricky, uh, problem that we need to solve, which is how do we get the RDAP's voice to the legislature? In, when the legislative session moves so quickly and the RDAP simply does not have the resources to be able to move as quickly as the rest of us who work in big, powerful government offices can. And we're all invited to those tables to testify by we, I mean, the, the government um, stakeholders. Right. So I think it is an important problem for us to, to figure out how to solve. I don't think, Aton, you need to apologize for anything. There was nothing, your your hands were tied. I don't know what you would have done on short notice. And I don't want the legislature to get the message that like the RDAP is just, you know, like we can't weigh in. It's more about we need a fair process so that we are able to weigh in. And I would say that those of us who are closely involved with all of these bills, we should be coming, who are on the RDAP, we should be coming to the RDAP in um, November. I, I I should have come to this body in November. I knew about H645. I love H645. Yes, it's a 65 page bill, but I'll distill it this way. It's to expand pre-charge diversion across the state of Vermont. There's a bunch of pages in there that Derek could talk to, but essentially that's what it is to create a pre-charge diversion program across the state. Um, and by that, I mean a restorative approach that diverts people from the, the legal system earlier. This is all to say, one process would have been, I bring this to the RDAP in November, say heads up, working on this bill, want you all to know about it, I'll keep you in the loop, you'll probably hopefully be asked to testify, and we figure out who for the RDAP is going to testify, who can bring the community voices to the legislature. Um, and so I, I don't know what we do about this session in particular, but I think moving forward, that's a process that we is really important for the RDAP to figure out. I think moving forward this session, what I'm going to do, I have um, Nader 
um, Hashim is a friend and I'm going to get in touch with him and say, Nader, we've got to have a lot of conversations after, you know, before crossover, um, uh, because there's a lot that you're going to be dealing with that I need to bring to the panel. So that's, that's the solution. The only thing I can think of for this session at this point, but it's not perfect. I admit Rebecca. Um, on that, on that note about proposing solutions for this session, oh my gosh, I'm going to try to be even more, let's speak a few more words. I propose since you already have this standing agenda item for next month, for second Tuesday of March, we try to identify the bills because I want to second what Susanna Davis just shared. It is alarming absolutely alarming, uh, the bills that are being last minute dropped. So I appreciate that some bills may have some advance notice by some who are supporting it back in November. And there's some, and that's how many weeks in on a second year biennium, which is radically trying to change our criminal justice system, radically expanding and making prosecutions easier on substance of uh, uh, drug offenses, right? Uh, areas that directly impact racial disparities. We're just getting those changes now. My proposal is we try to scramble this session because as Mark said, we do have the benefit of a number of us on this panel having and being in there on our respective organizations. We know which ones have racial disparate impacts think, and bring that forward and actually identify them for next month's agenda. Yeah. Uh, get the information and, and, and I don't know how we want to do it. We all could contribute to share um, what the positions are, what the interests are, and maybe we can take a vote then or not. Let's, let's if you've got a bill, you've got access to it. I'm sure everyone does because we all have computers. Send it. You don't need to send it to me. There doesn't need to be a middleman. Just send it out to the entire panel. Send it out. Chief. Yeah, the last thing I'll say, what worried me a little bit when you said they're actually holding up a vote in order to get information from us. We also don't want to be used as some sort of scapegoat, why they're not doing something or why something they get, didn't get done or meet meet some sort of criteria. So I'm just saying we have to be very careful, too, that, um, you know, it's great to have a voice, but if it's holding up things, too, waiting on us and we can't do it, we don't want people getting upset at us for not doing something they trust me they won't but yes you're right you're you're absolutely right um tim yeah so i have a lot of thoughts about this that i really can't put into verbalizations right now but today for example i spent 12 hours my full-time job doing things over at the legislature coordinating with 14 separately elected states attorneys and i also show up on this board um and um that's why I want to sort of say that I appreciate that we're having this conversation, but I'm currently tracking over 190 bills oh um, that have an impact on the criminal or juvenile, juvenile justice system. Um, and so it isn't like there's a few, there's a lot, um, particularly this session, as Rebecca has pointed out. And I have serious limitations as to the ability to freely communicate with, with folks when I also am trying to figure out on a daily basis legislators constantly reaching out to me, hey, what are the state's attorneys think about this, think about that, then communicating that to another group is, is a hard thing for me to even conceptualize. So I'm happy to come up and chat. I might be greatly limited in some of my ability to engage here. And you might see testimony where you see that, it would, with dear, due respect to my good colleague, Aaron Jacobson, where even state's attorneys and AGO may not be on the same page. And and that's okay. That's a part of the process. But just wanted to flag that um, I'm always like the person in the room saying it's hard when you have a, a, a big group that I try to work with. But um, I would be greatly limited in some of this, not to be obstructionist, but just because it's my job has some innate hurdles that are kind of built into it. So thank you for that. And I do have to run in a second. Um, no, we all we all really yeah. kind of do. Um... The next meeting is the 12th of March. We're going to, we obviously know what we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to be working on these bills. Um, and I want to thank you for the discussion we've just had, because I know exactly what I'm going to say tomorrow. 
Um, <laughs> I know exactly what I'm going. Yeah, no, I'll have a little something beforehand. Um, anyway, <laughs> thank you all. Does anyone want to make a motion? This is the part where Jessica always gets annoyed. Oh, for the love of God, somebody. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. Is that, do I sound annoyed? No, I'm excited. No, no, no. I'm annoyed because it's 820. Jessica, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know what I mean. Remember last month when I was like, does anyone want, you were like, okay, we're done. Bye. I'll, I'll, make, a... I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second I'll, second it. I'll second it. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Good work. Thank you.